We're going to do some more advanced training with Waffle. He's a little cocker spaniel, ready to go shooting just about. Dan's going to do some training with him. I'm going to talk you through it. Hi, my name's Charlie Thorburn. Welcome to Mordor Gun Dogs. Uh, we're going to do another video this week with Waffle. Uh, we're coming to the end of Waffle's sort of uh, career with us, if I'm honest. We've got a month or two to go and he's ready to get out and do a bit of shooting, a bit of um, uh, cold game and shots and all that sort of thing. So we're going to do some advanced training. I'm going to talk you through what Dan's doing. It's going to be interesting for Waffle because, you know, Dan and I have recently been splitting his training, but obviously he was very much my dog for the first year or so of his life. So we'll see how he gets on. So as usual, we start off with a little bit of healing on the lead. St stop and sit him down on the whistle. And then once he's, once he's settled down, Dan will just take him off the lead when he's ready. Carry on at heel off the lead. You can see he's just hesitating, looking back at me, thinking, oh, I'm not sure who to go with. But his heel work on the lead and off the lead come on really well. He's very attentive, paying attention to what Dan's asking him to do, stopping on the whistle. Going out for a simple mark retrieve with a rabbit skin dummy. <laughs> you can't knock him for his enthusiastic return. <laughs> I mean, he literally flipped his back legs off the ground. So the problem we've got now with, with Waffle is he's been in this field that many times that he's getting a bit bored and a bit sticky. Um, we've had him out in some areas where there's more game and he's getting much more enthusiastic about his hunting. But going through the motions in the field, uh, it's just a bit dull for him. And I guess it's like going out on a driven grouse day and coming back and trying to shoot clay pigeons. <laughs> um, it's just not the same. So we still go through the motions. We're not too worried about his sort of lack, lackluster in hunting because we've seen him going on game and, we're, and he's going to be a good little chap. Just when you fire it, just make sure you watch the dummy, what, look back at him, just check he's looking at it. So fire the dummy launcher, send him off through the long grass. Now we're hunting him into the wind still. He's still a young dog. We want to give him every opportunity to get it right. But that'll then just get his mojo going a little bit, get him doing a bit of hunting. Now, Let him go again. And again. So it's really important to be doing uh, plenty of stop whistles at this stage in a young dog's life. You may look at him and see that he's plodding along a little bit and not, and not actually hunting that well, but we know that he can and we know that he does, so it's more important that we've got the brakes than the accelerator. Uh, everyone's always worried about the accelerator. Uh, at this stage in a Cocker Spaniel's career, sort of 16-month-old dog, the, the accelerator's not, not going to be a problem. So we've done a, a little bit of walking to heel on the lead, a little bit of walking to heel off the lead. We've done uh, the dummy launcher. And we're just going to give him a left and a right at a distance. And then the second, the second retrieve turns into a bit of a, a bit of a memory for him. So he thought of going, he thought of going before he's told. So Dan's just taking him back to the original spot, sitting him down, and then returning so it becomes a proper left and right retrieve. Often, often when someone brings the, the dummy, the dog brings the dummy back, they'll send the dog off from where they're standing, and then it isn't really a left or a right.
Cast him off again, Dan. You're out. He had a little moment, he came past me, he looked at me to say, are you going to take the dummy off me, Dad? And I just turned away, I didn't look at him, and he went on to Dan, because Dan was there giving him all the, all the good um, eye contact. Um, Dan, I just want to try something. Just cover his eyes. Okay, just, just wait a second. Just hunt him on, Dan. And then over towards the other one. So part of the reason that I want to do this with with uh, with Dan working him is so that um, Waffle kind of gets the hang of me being around while someone else is working him. Because when when he goes to his new home, I'm going to be there with the owner and I'm going to be getting them to work him uh, while I'm while I'm standing there. And Waffle needs to figure that out and not come looking back to me too much. So he's doing okay. Um, not the most exciting performance by Waffle, but he's not done anything wrong. He's not been, in, not been naughty. He's done a half a dozen retrieves. He's done some stopping on the whistle. He's done some shots. He's done a bit of, a bit of quartering and hunting. Nothing very special, but just a little basic kind of daily routine to be doing with him. So we'll just give him one more shot down as a memory and walk away. So pretty excited to be around me and Ian, pretty distracting, that's fine. But just good for Dan and Waffle just to work through that and insist that he comes back. But his retrieving drive's good enough that he's straight past us, gone to the fall, picked it up, no problem, straight back again. So coming on really nicely uh, in that department. A little bit silly still, you can see there's a lot of little, that silly little Waffle that you all know and love. He's got a little, he's got his character and he's never going to lose that, but he's starting to turn into a, a nice, a nice gun dog. So what we're going to think about working on with Waffle probably going forward is if we want to carry on hunting him in the sort of training field here, we're going to need to give him incentive. So probably every time he comes in here, we'll have a half a dozen things, hidden retrieves, hidden for him. So he's got something to hunt and to find. So between Dan and me, we'll just get in the habit of coming out here with, a, with another dog, dropping a few things, going back to the kennels, coming back out with waffles so he's straight into the field straight away he's finding things he's getting his kind of mojo for hunting in this in this environment it's difficult because what what we don't want to do is we don't want to just rely on having to go and find game because we can't always do that um, we have to do some training at home but we don't want him thinking that tottering around is what we want him to do so we want to get a little bit of drive say i'm not worried about him flying around like a field trial dog but a little bit more drive a little bit more go about him so that we know that those brakes are really working. But as far as his retrieving and things go, we're not worried about that at all. And all we'd really be focusing on is trying to simulate the real thing, the shooting environment, and that would be him hunting up, firing the dummy launcher into the ground, not doing big long retrieves, just shot length retrieves. The young chap who's gonna get him shoots with a 28 gauge. He's gonna be shooting things within about 25 or 30 yards. So that's kind of the range. We want to be firing the dummy launcher into the ground. So Waffle's hunting along, dummy launcher fires, he stops, he sits, gets a mark retrieve, straight out, picks it up, and then hunts on for the next one. And that's what Waffle's life's going to be. It's not going to be sitting, picking up on a driven pheasant shoot. It's all going to be one-to-one -one or, or two guns and one dog rough shooting uh, for 25, 30 minutes, having a little break, and then doing another 25, 30 minutes. So that's where we're kind of heading with Waffle now, getting him out doing real live kind of 
training situations and real live shooting over the next kind of month or so. And then, you know, fingers crossed, you'll be ready to go. Thank you all for watching. And remember, you get out what you put in.